Hello, my name is Michael David Needleman, and I'd like to welcome you to the first ever installation of The Creative Life. The Creative Life will be a, a series of interviews dealing with the roots and causes of creativity with wherever and however that creativity is expressed. Um, the young lady I've chosen to be our first guest on the Creative Life is Kelsey Ann Heimerman. Um, I met this Kelsey mm -hmm. to my left. Um, I met Kelsey here at Southside, uh, which is where we both reside and, and work, and have been very impressed right from the get-go with what I saw her doing. And uh, I thought she would be um, a perfect uh, beginning to our series here. So um, let me uh, welcome and um, introduce Kelsey and oh, Thank Heimerman you so much for having you. me. Um, the first question I have is what in your mind is meant by creativity? Where, where do you think it comes from? I think creativity is a, definitely something that artists feel inside of us or chefs. We were talking earlier about the multitude of creative outlets. Um, I've always felt like I've had that drive within me. I came from a family of artists, so from really early on I had paints and crowns and all the supplies around me. But I also think it's a, a product of our environment. And I think what's interesting about that is that we don't all come from the same environments, but I think as people grow up, you learn to create those own environments within your mind, which I think come out in the production of your work. Who, who did you find to be the, the people that um, inspired you the most? Hmm. Definitely my family, where I come from. I'm fortunate to come from a really good family. So my mother and father are both really hardworking and also creative. And I have two older sisters. One's a photographer and one has an antique glass shop in Italy. And just like as we all grow older, the more creative we all become. And I think that's always been just like something to come home to. Good. When it comes to your, your, your painting especially, uh, who are your muses, if you want to put it, if I could put it that way? Um, a muse for the work would be just people. I've become like obsessed with people and capturing like what people feel like now. Mm -hmm. um, trying to paint in a contemporary way with the people that we see every day doing kind of ordinary things have become obsessed with that idea. And I think it's something that painters have done for a long time is paint their environment and their history that's around them. So in a way, I like to try and continue that legacy. And uh, I think other muses are just like people that are doing similar things that I'm doing, like other artists and great works of art that I see and things like this. Who are the greats uh, in, in your eyes? Um, I mean, you can go back really early on, like to cave paintings, mm -hmm. um, great works of art done by people that we don't know, but so fascinating and the fact that they were done tens of thousands of years ago. Um, but now, more recent, uh, like contemporary people that are alive, I love Connor Harrington and. Uh, my mind is blinking. Ross and Crow. Uh, some people in the 80s that were really inspiring were like Jean-Michel Basquiat and Keith Haring and Francis Bacon, all those people who are kind of self-made. One artist that I really admire is Henry Darger. I think he has a fab fabulous story on just like never being known but producing a lifetime of incredible works. I've noticed uh well, uh, it was about a year ago that um, you 
started getting into sculpture and working three-dimensionally. Mm -hmm. um, do you, um, what about working in three dimensions uh, do you find more challenging than the canvas or hmm. drawing? I don't really find like a, a huge challenge and I think it's really exciting because I've been working on 2D surfaces for so long, like just to have more surfaces, more dimensions in the space to like walk around and create a conversation. I think it's actually a lot easier than doing it on a 2D surface because it's 2D, I feel like it has to be so cohesive in what you're talking about, where a 3D experience, you can have one experience from this angle and you can walk around and have something completely different. But it's challenging in the way of like thinking about 3D space from like the sketchbook, which is kind of where I start with those pieces. So thinking on a two-dimensional surface about what it would physically be like in 3D, there's a little bit more technical applications that I think have to be addressed. But I love things like that, so it's been really fun to get into sculpture. Uh, have you just been working with metal and wood uh, up to now? Yeah, mostly metal and wood. My father's a master carpenter, so I've always had an affinity for wood, but metal happens to paint really nicely and it can be outside and there's a certain longevity to it. So metal has been really fun too. I'm just kind of, I had this uh, client who really wanted me to make a sculpture for them and I hadn't really made any sculpture and they were really the one who pushed me to uh, get into it and I just kind of immediately fell in love. Excellent. Tell, tell me about, uh, tell us about um, how you uh, became um, a winner of the uh, Nasher grant. Sure, it was a micro grant that I was awarded at the beginning of this year, 2016. And it's a grant that they offer, I think, once or twice a year to uh, artists in North Texas. So anyone can apply and I found out after I won uh, that I was actually the youngest artist that had received the award, which was interesting. But I, uh, it's a simple process. You just apply, pay a submission fee, and uh, write a one-page letter of intent of what you would use the uh, award for. So I applied for 10 really large uh, wood panels to paint on. And I got it. They supplied the panels for me, and I've been working on those series all this year. And it was really great to have the, the recognition from the museum. Definitely uh, has helped me this year, kind of talk to more people and mm. uh, open a few doors. Um, what, uh, what level of success, well, I know you've had some success getting into the gallery scene here mm -hmm. in Dallas, and um, I, I've heard it said that it, it's a really tough uh, circuit to get into. Mm. Um, what did you find in your... I think there's lots of different places to show work professionally here. Um, it is a little competitive, but I find that if you just keep talking to people and keep making work that it's not a completely closed circuit. I think there's lots of different opportunities for different levels of artists here. Um, I've been fortunate enough this year to sell a lot of my work independently, so I haven't really too strongly gone after the uh, gallery scene here in Dallas because I've been able to do it on my own, which has been nice. Uh, but I am kind of like craving a little bit of a, a network right now. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've always found trying to network on my own was uh, worked out a little bit better than trying to... It's a um, different avenue. You yeah. can go with representation or you can get commissioned projects from corporate buildings. It really kind of depends on what your idea of success and representation is. I think one is I think going through galleries and kind of immediately getting representation kind of gives you immediate gratification. Doing it on your own, I think, definitely takes a little more mojo to get it all done, but I think both are rewarding. It's interesting that you mentioned the corporate um, avenue because 
um, I read and, and hear uh, in talking with other artists uh, their concern about the fact that so much business, uh, so much commerce in art uh, comes as a result of um, corporate interests and, and the deep pockets that corporations have. Do you think that is, um, do you think that has a, any sort of adverse effect on uh, artists starting out uh, in terms of discouraging them from trying to get into a more private type area? Um, no, I don't think it brings discouragement. I think it's an interesting opportunity. And I think it's really easy to tell whether you're in a, a fine art museum or a corporate building that's obviously paid a substantial amount of money for these pieces, whether the artwork is authentic or not. And I think that just comes from like a feeling of being in front of something. I think it's really easy to tell like when certain people have got away with like creating something for the mass that kind of maybe doesn't speak to everybody or it just seems like, you know, not enough intention was behind it, not enough of the head, the heart, and the hand. And I think uh, that's what's important when you're moving your artwork into business, is making sure that it retains the uh, thing that drove it to you in the first place. Mm. Um, there was a um, Justice Potter Stewart, uh, Supreme Court Justice, uh, was quoted as having said, uh, I don't know what, porn uh, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. Um, Same what, thing for the what, arts, what, I guess. What about, what about, um, uh, what about uh, art? Uh, could you take that same, you know, like paraphrase and said, I, I, I'm not sure I can define art, but I know it when I see it. Yeah, and I think that's absolutely how it should be. Um, because everything is changing so much now that like traditional artists, they might be doing something completely new with sound, media, video, painting, combining all these things, installation, and like a gallery might not necessarily know where to place that in a category. And I think it's very important to always push the categories and like use the contemporary tools, but also, you know, remain honest to the traditional past that everything that art used to be and has been. Is it just me or is it uh, the, the situation that uh, so much of what is presented as art is artistic but not art? No, I think there's a huge spectrum and I think at the top of the spectrum, there's some really incredibly beautiful and inspiring things, but uh, it's important to remember that it is a spectrum. So you're gonna have you know, different kinds of art on really bad art, kind of okay art, people who are learning, you know, people who get into the museums, <clears throat> people who are doing something new and exciting. I think there is a spectrum, but I think there's absolutely some incredible things happening now. Where do you see your journey going? Well, I would hope it would end up somewhere where a lot of people could experience the work at the same time, whether that's in a, a big space or um, through the internet or whatever path and form it's going to take. Uh, the ultimate goal would just to be to have the work live amongst a mass of people so that the message could be, I guess, passed on. But what do you what is your message? If, uh, I mean, if it's, if it's possible to, if that's not a question that, uh, that isn't really possible to answer. In, I think in just really to create a work of art, I mean, mostly my work now is painting and just dipping my foot in the water and sculpture, but mostly with the paintings, it's just to leave something beautiful something that's like technically beautiful and rich in color and tells kind of a story and all my paintings kind of tell different stories so with each one it's kind of a, a new chapter in the experience so the iconography changes and like but they're all kind of on the similar message of just trying to relay the message of living a purposeful life and leaving behind something 
to be seen for the people after us. What for you is, what's most gratifying um, for you about what you do? Hmm. Recently it has allowed me just to experience my life in a new way without having a day job and just being able to like be in my studio and like have a coffee in the morning and do more things like this and uh, I would say right now that's the most gratifying it's like finally I've made it to a moment where I can like live off my work and uh, right now I would say that's the gratifying part yeah yeah that uh, um, is does the work is the work itself uh, does the work itself embody constant experimentation and, and evolution? I know that that seems like a prosaic and somewhat naive question, but um, it relates back to something I said before. I, I, I've seen work from uh, people um, in and around the area and all over that. Uh, they'll, uh, an artist will reach a plateau mm. and, um, or a stage in their development and stop there. Mm. And what about your own personal evolution? Well, I think always changing scale, whether I'm going really, really big or really, really small, always changes my frame of mind to kind of evolve the work further, especially like with experimentation. In, do you like working in big formats? Yeah, but lately I switched to working really, really tiny, which has been a really interesting uh, painting process to have both sides of the, the spectrum there. Um, also, working in new mediums, 3D or mm. digital design. Um, I don't just do painting sculpture. Sometimes I'll do logo design, commercial design for people. So I think just like keeping it fresh with how you're working is always important. All right, excellent. Well, um, well, Kelsey, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for, so much for um, having me. It's been our pleasure. And um, thank you, uh, everyone out there. Thank for, you. Uh, and thank you to, uh, very much to the man behind the scenes, Arthur Porter, for um, doing all the really important work in getting this uh, um, in digital form. Um, and um, everyone, um, be well, good luck, have a great day, uh, do something great, and um, we'll see you next time. See Thank you next you. time. Bye. Bye.